It's my pleasure now to welcome uh, the Managing Director for the Center for Financial Inclusion. Uh, please welcome for the year in review our own Natasha Goronia. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, and thank you, Carolina and Michael, for those speeches. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of everyone at CFI, welcome to the RFF. My name is Natasha Goronia, and I'm the Managing Director of CFI. I have two jobs in this session, in this segment that we have um, ahead of us over the next 20 minutes. I want to take you for a year in review between RFF 2023 and this RFF. What have we done over the past 12 months? And I want to take you through a few interactive exercises. And I'm going to start with the exercises first, because I think that it's good for us to get up and stretch. So uh, before we start uh, with the exercises and the year in review, I just uh, also wanted us, especially after the speeches by Michael and Carolina, and as we set into the agenda for today that is packed with many sessions, let's ask ourselves, why are we here? as we set our intent mentally for each and every one of ourselves um, for this event. I believe that we are all here because we believe in the power of collective action and the impact that each and every one of us can have after digging into the hard discussions that we're going to have around some of the emerging risks that um, are important for us to uncover as we work each at each one of our individual levels, practitioner and policymaker, to build responsible and inclusive financial systems. So, now, I'm going to take you through those exercises that I promised. So I'm going to come down to the podium, and hopefully my mic is going to work. So, I heard that some people had eventful journeys, but before we ask you how long did it take you to get here, let me just ask first um, if you can stand up if you have been to an RFF before. So anyone that's been to RFF before, please stand up. Thank you to those alumni. Now, um, please take a look, look around and um, make sure to connect to either people that have been to an RFF, but we also see that there is a number of newcomers that haven't been to an RFF before. We welcome all of you, and um, I hope that you will take the opportunity over the course of the day to network and get to e know each other better. Thank you very much. You're welcome to sit down. Next, I want to recognize, first of all, um, I know that all of you lead very busy lives and are busy professionals. It's a big commitment to take two days to come here to Brazil. We appreciate you having taken the time to come here. I also understand that for some of us, it took a long time to travel to get here. So, for everyone for whom it took longer than two hours, everyone who traveled longer than two hours to get here, please stand up. Okay. You can also stretch while you're standing up if you like. <laughs> Is that okay? All right. Now, if it took you longer than 10 hours, please remain, remain standing, and if it took you less than 10 hours, then you can sit down. So if it took you 10 hours or more, please remain standing. Now, if it took you longer than 15 hours, please remain standing. If it took you longer than 20 hours, please remain standing. If it Okay, we're seeing that there are some people for whom it took even longer than 20 hours. How about if it took you longer than 30 hours to get here? Wow. Thank you. Yes. I was wondering if you just want to tell us where you came from and your name and the institution. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Josh. Uh, I came from Nairobi in Kenya. 
and I work for a small fintech called Possessure. Thank you, Josh, and welcome. How about you? I'm sure everybody knows Eric, but just in case. This was a setup. <laughs> uh, 54 hours for Maria and myself. Um, I'm with SIGAP, and I'm delighted to finally be here with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And there was one more person. I'm Julie Zolman, also from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We have some small gifts for those of you who travel the longest that our wonderful interns are going to pass out. I know it's not going to cure 50 hours of travel, but it's some good Brazilian chocolate. Now, I'm going to ask you for some more standing exercises. Is this okay with everybody? You're okay with it? So the next exercise that I will be asking you to do is a kind of an identification exercise to help us understand who do we have in the room, okay? So first I'm gonna read off the institutional types I will be asking um, to stand up by institutional, um, organizational type. And just so that you can think ahead to identify one priority institutional type that you wanna identify with for the purposes of this exercise, I'll read them off. And I know that some people will be sticklers for detail and that you'll tell me, well, but I could be of two different institutional types. But for, for the purposes of this exercise, just pick one. So I will ask you if you work for a central bank, Ministry of Finance, or any other government institution first. Then I will ask you second, the second set of people I'll ask to stand up are investors. The third type of, of people I'll ask to stand up are financial service providers of all types. Fintechs, commercial banks, MFIs, everyone. Then I'll ask consumer protection advocates to stand up. Then I'll ask researchers and think tanks. And after that, I'll ask you to stand up if you work for a multilateral, bilateral, or private donor. And then I'll ask you for um, standing up if you're an NGO or any other type of institution. And hopefully, they'll cover everybody. Does the exercise make sense so far? Okay, so if, please stand up if you come from a central bank, Ministry of Finance, or any other government agency. Okay, so this is a good portion of the room. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming. Please sit down. Next, I'll ask you um, to stand up if you work as a financial service provider. Okay. Thank you. Next, are you an investor? Any investors? Okay, thank you. Uh, how about consumer protection advocacy organizations? Thank you. Thank you. How about researchers and think tanks? Wonderful. Thank you. And how about multilateral, bilateral, and uh, private foundations? Thank you. And last, NGOs and civil society organizations. Great, thanks. Anyone else I have called on at all? Good. International organizations, okay. Any other international organizations? Yes. There's some. Thank you so much. I wanted you to, uh, I wanted us to recognize the multitude of dimensional, uh, dimensions of perspectives that we have in the room and um, how well represented the financial system is. And um, hopefully that's another way that we can use um, this event to learn from each other. Now I'm going to go back in time to 2023. And I will share with you briefly now what were identified as the current risks at the time and what were seen as the issues on the horizon. Next, we will uh, talk about the working groups that occurred between the two RFFs and the work that they engaged on. But here, is, uh, here are some direct quotes from participants at the RFF in Bangalore. Bangalore, um, by the way, was the first in-person responsible finance forum convening that uh, CFI put together since we formally took over the convener role for the RFF. So 
what we see here as being identified as far as the current risks are issues around trust. We see both consumer trust in digital financial services potentially eroding, and conversely, some issues uh, around providers not having trust in some of the consumers due to information asymmetry. We also see um, some questions around what constitutes responsible finance when it comes to design, and perhaps some signaling that there is a lack of alignment in, an under, in a shared understanding around the design of responsible finance. That's what, that was seen as the current risks. As far as what the participants in 2023 identified as horizon issues, we see those on the right-hand side in yellow, and there's issues around cyber threats, in the inclusive sector, uh, finance sector not being prepared to handle macro risks, and the importance you see in area number three uh, in yellow placed on the continuing efforts to be made when it comes to research on the impact of these newer risks. So that's what the participants said, and then I will show you the three working groups that operated in the year in between. To do that, I'm going to ask Jayshree to help you. All of you know Jayshree by now. Jayshree leads our consumer protection work and this very responsible finance forum. So Jayshree, what have the working groups worked on since 2023? Do you want to tell us a little bit more? Thank you, Natasha. Um, so it often seems like RFF is just an annual event, but there's a lot of work that happens at the background. Uh, we had a working group that was run on, facilitated by the Better Than Cash Alliance, which produced a report, uh, which has now been published on the website. Um, we have a working group on uh, AI, which was launched two years ago, which continues to operate and keep track of, um, of all the developments that are taking place on the AI front, which, and it's a mix, the nice mix of regulators, uh, practitioners, as well as, um, you know, big tech companies that, I, that, that intend using this, um, you know, intend using AI going forward. So that group is going to continue operating. Uh, we have a group that's led uh, by CGAP on digital credit, and uh, I, I know Eric's going to speak a little bit more about that. Um, and then last year, we started um, a really important deep dive into a thematic area. It's not yet a working group uh, on digital public infrastructure. So we facilitated a roundtable. Um, and we're going to present some things uh, on DPI today. And the idea very much is that that's going to evolve because DPI is such a core topic for financial inclusion and delivery of digital financial services. And we would very much welcome everybody's uh, inputs as that topic continues to evolve. And I'm not quite sure if working groups are the right model. So the other thing to also think about is, you know, what should we then think about as a participatory mechanism uh, so that everybody can contribute to important topics. And the other thing to keep in mind is as today progresses, if there are topics that you'd like us to then focus on over the next few years, also bring that up. With that, Natasha. Thank you, Jayshree, uh, for the summary of the AI and the DPI working group. And now we're going to hear a little bit about the digital credit working group that is led by CGAP. And Eric is uh, Eric Duflo, who you saw earlier, if you have met him earlier uh, before today, um, is going to summarize for us that work and uh, give us, uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Natasha, and thank you so much for the warm welcome from our Brazilian colleagues and from CFI. Um, my name is Eric Duflo. I work with CGAP, and I'm covering consumer protection and responsible digital finance. I'm actually talking on behalf of my colleague Juan Carlos uh, Izaguirre, who is leading the uh, working group uh, on responsible digital credit. Uh, and before I talk about this, I just want to pay tribute to uh, a former colleague of ours, Kate McKee, who was a mentor, and, um, sorry. I didn't expect this, sorry. 
Um, anyway, but she was one of the founders of the RFF and also uh, one of the founders of the concept of responsible finance itself. So big kudos to her. So on, on the digital credit, um, in very close collaboration with, uh, with the RFF, uh, we've been working on uh, trying to uh, develop some research agenda, which is actually on CGAP's you know, um, strategy uh, for the next few years. So we have, CGAP has invested on uh, digital credit research for many years. Uh, one of the things that we have done this past year is actually we've pulled together all our own knowledge at CGAP into a collection page for digital credit with all the knowledge we have accumulated over the, the this you know past 10 years uh, so that's available of course and then we've started to work on uh, two uh, aspects uh, which is a global landscape of solutions taken by different actors to make digital credit more responsible so we're looking we're searching for all the solutions out there that have been implemented for more digital credit both from regulators and from um, providers of digital credit and then um, so we're sort of in the midst of this and you know we're obviously involving the RFF in, in this um, and then we're also um, going to do deep dives based on the landscaping to identify better what are all the sort of components of these solutions go deep you know sort of going deeper on some of these solutions we have found now some of the questions that are going to be discussed today um, are and are going to be addressed you know, in our research uh, are about what are some of the early signals uh, of potential you know, risks in terms of using uh, digital credit, um, and also you know, what, what can be the role of the uh, market infrastructure to solve this. So these are some of the, obviously some of the uh, uh, topics we'll cover in the, uh, in the work. Thanks, Natasha. Thank you, Eric. With this final slide, I will end this segment, and I want to leave you with this. At the end of the day, the most valuable asset we all have is consumer trust. Everything we do uh, when working on financial inclusion and building inclusive financial services and systems must come back to people and ensuring that people trust the financial services they're offered are the right ones for them, that the data that they provide will be protected and that the financial service providers have their best interests in mind. This is especially important if we think about the state of the world today and the state of citizen trust. In preparation for this session, I looked up something called the Edelman, Edelman Trust Barometer, which is a public opinion poll that looks at the issues around trust in 28 countries by uh, interviewing 1,150 citizens from each one of these countries. And what it shows is some erosion of trust, but also path forward. And I believe that the path forward is for the businesses to partner with governments on technology initiatives. I see this convening, the RFF that we kicked off yesterday, and we're gonna continue for the remainder of the day today as another step in that direction as we each bring our different perspectives to the table. So, over to you, Frank. I believe you're gonna tell us about coffee. <laughs>